So I'd say overall it's it's a pretty good bundle. <laughs> Hello friends, my name is Brandon Dayton, I am your humble narrator, and welcome back to another bundle banter. Oh, Fanatical's just giving me such a hard time, you know? <laughs> they came out with this Lockdown 2 Build Your Own Bundle, and it is beefy. I can remember some of the games, but I had to dip into a lot of them, and it took a while to put the video together, so I definitely hope that you guys will enjoy it. With that said, let's jump into the tiers, and look at these games. One game for one dollar, five games for three dollars, ten games for five dollars, that's a pretty good deal, especially if the games are decent. You can go ahead and form your own opinions as I read them off. We've got Days of War Definitive Edition, Lucius 3, Detention, Rise of Insanity, Pathologic Classic HD, Mabel and the Wood, Use Your Words, The Light Keeps Us Safe, The Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures, Simple Planes, ATV Drift and Tricks, Double Cross, Trident's Wake, Bridge Constructor Medieval, The Angry Video Game Nerd 2, Ass Simulation, Cave Blazers, Motor Racer 4, World of Zoo, Castaway Paradise, Joggernauts, Spirits of Xanadu, Dive Kick, and <gasps> Black Hole. Man, I've covered, I think, the AVGN 2 game, Black Hole, Motor Racer, I can remember, Pathologic, I can remember. Uh, Rise of Insanity rings bells for some reason, and of course Cave Blazers, which is one of my favorite games ever, ever. As for the rest of them, well, I guess we'll just have to jump in and find out how it went as we look at each of these games individually. Days of War Definitive Edition Oh, another trip to the World War that has been covered by more media than any other. That's right, we're going back to World War II. In order to make it in the oversaturated world of World War II FPS titles, you're gonna have to do something special. And Days of War doesn't really manage that. It's still an alright looking game with some decent gunplay, but it spent three years in early access and by the time it came to full release this January, its age had really started to show. It's been given away a few times in hopes of building a solid player base, but that didn't really happen either. Honestly, you're probably better off playing the game that inspired this one. Day of Defeat Source still has a semi-active online community, something that Days of War simply couldn't achieve despite its best efforts. What a sad tale. But let's be honest, how many times can we possibly get excited about visiting World War II? Just... please stop. Lucius 3. Playing as the Antichrist seems pretty cool. You can kill NPCs in inventive ways, and that even includes kids, which is pretty badass. Unfortunately, that's really the only positive stuff that I have to say about Lucius 3. The game is a graphically horrible, unoptimized mess. It touts being an open world game, but the storyline really is just completely linear. How did they manage such a feat? Well, the simple answer is, they didn't. Exploring too much or sacrificing the wrong people will cut you off from gigantic swaths of the story, which can end up making the game and its story completely incoherent. The first two Lucius games weren't too bad, so it's kind of sad that they tried to outdo themselves and ended up throwing out this buggy mess as a release to strike while the iron was hot, so to speak, instead of polishing it into something that could have made for a passable trilogy. The game is just as unstable as the main character itself, if it crashes, do yourself a favor and just don't reopen it. Detention! Yep, it's a point and click. Into the trash it goes. I've even got to take it all the way up back to the incinerator to make sure it doesn't come back, because it's an atmospheric horror point and click. The only thing worse than atmospheric horror is psychological horror. Eh, maybe that's too harsh. The game takes place during martial law in Taiwan, which is something that actually happens, so bonus points there. The characters are also pretty likable, and the game admittedly does a good job of maintaining a creepy vibe. I can see why people might enjoy this title. I was almost on the cusp of enjoying it myself, but I can't help feeling that it would make a better movie than a game. It feels like the writers made a great story, and then they took it to the artist that attached some fantastic artwork, and at the end, they tried to cobble those elements together into a game and it shows. As a movie, I'd love to watch this. As a game, it feels like a letdown. Use your words. Calling this a poor man's jackbox is not completely inaccurate. While I enjoy the concept of filling in the blanks to make a funny, 
Use your words just doesn't manage to do it. The pace of the game is exceedingly slow. So if your friends lack patience, then they're going to check out within the first round or two. The UI is ugly and pretty clunky. I'd honestly be kind of embarrassed to pull this one out as a party game. I've got a laundry list of things I'd rather play instead. Heave Ho, Ultimate Chicken Horse, Overcooked, Gang Beast, Mount Your Friends, Screen Cheats, Death Squared, Octodad, Star Wall. It, even if we're limiting it to board games, I've got like six Jackbox games, Fibbage, Drawful, Quiplash. And Quiplash is basically the game that Use Your Words is attempting to rip off, and not very gracefully, might I add. Give this game a skip, undoubtedly. Rise of Insanity. If you recall how I feel about psychological horror games from my rant about detention, then you can probably guess how things are going to go with Rise of Insanity. It's also a point and click. Hooray! This game really is bottom of the barrel in every regard. The voice acting is a fucking joke. The sound work and game design is subpar, and the graphics make the game feel like a giant shovelware asset flip. You wander around with a shitty 10 second music loop droning in your ears, open a few drawers, maybe more than just a few. This game is basically nothing but looking in drawers, and it's not even fun like it is in Fallout because there's nothing inside of them. All this drawer opening is punctuated by the occasional cheap jump scare, which doesn't work on me anymore because my nerves are shot to hell. It might be an interesting ride in VR, but something tells me that I'd still be bored to tears in less than half an hour. Rise of Insanity will drive you crazy. Wait, maybe the title is apt. Maybe the devs knew exactly what they were doing. You fucking Polish geniuses. Honestly though, I, I doubt that's the case. Angry Video Game Nerd Adventures. A challenging run and gun platformer that will put you through your paces while screaming about ball sacks and donkey shit. How can I say no? There are a lot of in-jokes that people who aren't AVGN fans will probably completely miss, but the game itself is well built enough to stand on its own two feet, even without the nerd branding behind it. The game is fairly easy on the easy mode, but once you start to turn up the heat, whew, it'll make you feel it. I can't even get through this fucking game on normal. That's how you know it's good. The controls are tight, the music is always a jam, and even though the game will fuck you sideways, it's possible to get through it if you are determined enough. I'm nowhere near hardcore enough to commit to this game like that, but I truly think that if you beat this game on hard with keyboard controls, they should crown you King of the Nerds. The light keeps us safe. Big Robot Limited seems to have a big rubbery boner for stealth games. I got no problem with that because they seem to do them pretty well. I've sung the praises of Signal from Tova on my channel once or twice before, but we have yet to talk about Sir You're Being Hunted, which was my first introduction to Big Robot way back in 2013. Well, they continue to experiment with the stealth genre. This procedurally generated stealth game will equip you with a flashlight and send you out into the world to craft, upgrade, explore, stealth, and survive. Once you've got a handle on the game, you can put it to bed relatively quickly, but for those first few playthroughs where you have no idea what you're doing, it's just so priceless. I love it. There are some people upset because it came out of early access too early, and I'll admit that definitely more could have been done within the game, but overall it turned out to be a pretty interesting experiment. I'd like to see more, but as I've said, not every game has to have hundreds of hours of content. The light keeps us safe is extremely fun and looks nice. And that's a job well done in my book. Mabel in the Wood. There are some good ideas in this game that never really seem to come into bloom. Movement is interesting, and the shape shifting can be fun if you like that sort of thing, but the game really fell flat for me when it came to the storyline, or lack thereof. The art is passable, the music is nice, and I really like using different monsters' powers and shape shifting during combat. As far as Metroidvanias go, this one is middling. Not as broken and shoddily cobbled together as Momodora, but nowhere near the tasty complexity of Axiom Verge. You can also take a pacifist route through the game, which kind of extends the replayability, but none of the possible endings will leave you with any answer to the multitude of questions that pop up during the story, like, who the fuck am I? What is going on? Where am I? Why is any of this shit happening? You can certainly get through the game on the merits of the gameplay alone, but it would really be nice if there were any sort of storyline that made me care at all about what was going on. Angry Video Game Nerd 2 Ass Simulation The first, tooth-grindingly difficult AVGN game apparently was not enough. 
we had to go back in for round two. This is a worthy sequel. It's angrier, nerdier, and even video gamier than the first iteration. Great level design with a hearty helping of masochism on the side? Don't mind if I do! I really do enjoy these games, and I wouldn't even mind if they were made into a trilogy at some point. The jokes and references are really packed in there. Even the names of the levels managed to make me crack a smile. <laughs> Hang dong 97. The game also relies less on the spiky death blocks that were jam-packed into the first version. This leads to a simulation feeling much more clever with its enemies and level design. Even if you've beaten the first game into the dirt, this installment is definitely worth a spin. The hard difficulty is even more impossible this time around, just when I didn't think it was possible. What were they thinking? <laughs> Double Cross. I consider myself somewhat of a platformer aficionado, so I'm a little loath to admit that this game managed to fly under my radar. I'm especially ashamed because this is actually a really good little platformer that implements plenty of awesome mechanics. You sling yourself off of orbs scattered around the level, and it feels really fun and fluid. There are also some light combat elements, and I mean really light. <laughs> You basically just punch things to death, but it doesn't detract from the game, so I guess it gets a pass. The art style is pretty nice, the story's fairly predictable, but it brings some quirky humor that managed to make me forget that the mystery of the main villain was so painfully obvious. There's probably a bit of replay value here for completionists, because there's an ore called Upgradium scattered across the levels. Unlocking a double jump right before the end of the game is good motivation to take another spin through and see how the double jump manages to change the game up. I probably won't do a complete run with the double jump, but I do want to enjoy the fruits of my labor. Castaway Paradise, or as I like to call it, Ugly Animal Crossing. You essentially do the exact same things. Catch fish and bugs, talk to your villagers, complete quests for them. It did touch on crafting and building far before Animal Crossing did, but essentially, it is an uglier version of New Horizons on your PC. Which is great if you don't have a Switch and also have a casual town building itch that needs scratching, much like Animal Crossing, Castaway Paradise runs in real time, which can be a big drawback for the more impatient gamers among us. Me personally, I like having things to look forward to the next time I boot up the game. If I simply sat and moved the clock at will, this game could be wrapped up pretty quick and my motivation to play would evaporate that much more quickly. Call me a purist, call me what you will. You play the game your way, and I'll play it mine. My way, of course, being the correct way. <laughs> <laughs> ATV Drift and Tricks, an ATV racing game that is about as clever as the generic title would imply. That is to say, not at all. ATV Drift has a very arcadey feel and lets you control your vehicle in midair. And it's not one of the worst things that I've ever played, but the limited AI and generic samey looking tracks are really nothing special. The one thing that sets this game apart is that you're driving an ATV, and I haven't seen very many ATV games. That's probably because it's a stupid idea. <laughs> the game is frustratingly difficult to control. It reminds me a lot of Moto Racer 4. Maybe because this game was made by the developers of Moto Racer 4. They also made... <gasps> Garfield Kart. No. No. Anything but that, please. <laughs> Not Garfield Cart. I have to go now. Simple Planes. <laughs> A clunkier version of Kerbal Space Program that keeps you well contained within the Earth's atmosphere. The flight part of this game feels pretty good, but the building is undeniably clunky. Why? Because this game is a mobile port. So pieces will snap into place without regard for exactly what you're trying to do while building. It is frustrating. I'm sure it's a godsend when building on a minuscule mobile screen, but on a gigantic desktop with pinpoint accurate mouse controls? Unacceptable. Unforgivable. <laughs> Good thing for me, I'm not much of a builder. I am a destroyer. I like to download things and then crash them into other things. The game doesn't judge me or penalize me. It simply gives me a sandbox and lets me have my own brand of entertainment. Simple Planes isn't a perfect game, but despite its flaws, it manages to push its way into the upper crust of this bundle. Pathologic Classic HD! I've talked about Pathologic a time or two before. The overall gist is that I definitely don't like this game, but I do respect the hell out of it. The timing couldn't have been any more correct. 
if you're going to commit yourself to Pathologic at any point, during the COVID-19 pandemic is probably one of the best times that you could pick. I say commit to the game instead of play this game, because playing is supposed to be fun, and Pathologic is far from fun. Clunky controls and slow pacing drag you through an atmospheric world where there is really no sense of good or evil. The game will present some hard choices, and then force you into a corner and you'll do things that you normally would never even consider doing in a video game. And once you look back on your actions, you'll realize the futility of trying to sort the world into good and evil. The world is neither. It just exists. And so do you. For a while, at least. Trident's Wake. This twin-stick shooter has a bare-bones story that still manages to be pretty awesome. Aliens are swarming your spaceship. You're a robot that has to defend the human embryo from the Scourge. It looks cool and plays pretty solid, but I can't help but feel that it's just a little bit generic and a little bit too easy. The maps lack variety, the enemy AI is broken, upgrades are easy enough to get after a grind, but there's not really a point to unlocking them because, like I said, the game is easier than the Nickel Slot Whorehouse. If that was the extent of its difficulties, I may actually end up liking the game, but oh no. It had to be buggy. If you're going to release a generic piece of shit, at least try your best to make sure that it isn't a broken mess. Could you do that? Could you do that for me? Apparently not. If you need a list of better twin stick shooters, just go look up basically anything by 1010's Limited. Shameless plug. <laughs> Moto Racer 4. We meet again, Moto Racer. How many times must I kill you? This one is even worse than ATB Drifts and Tricks, honestly. Though credit where credit is due, at least they didn't name it Motorcycle Race Driving People! It's just as bland and buggy as ATB Drift, which is no surprise considering the developer. I'm actually astonished that they managed to develop Garfield Kart without turning that into a complete pile of shit like all their other titles. I suppose that's just the magic of Garfield. I mean, that's not a great game by any stretch, but it's at least playable. Motor Racer might be playable if the controls weren't so broken, or at least had some settings you could tweak to make it feel just a little more controllable. As it stands, the tracks are well built, but thanks to the busted controls, extremely poor optimization, you probably won't even be able to play them. And I'll be honest, you aren't missing that much. Joggernauts. There are quite a few games out there that have you controlling two characters at the same time. Tale of Two Brothers comes to mind. There was also this shitty caveman game that I played on the channel way back when. But one of the most frantic among this strange type of game is Joggernauts. Match the color of your characters to the obstacles in your path to plow right through them. If you're a true master, you can try controlling four characters at once. How? Duh. You got feet, don't you? Alternatively, you could just bring in a friend. If you even have some of those. I don't. Overall, Joggernauts has some decent humor, wrapped up in a likable aesthetic, and it comes with a variety of options. Are things too difficult? Turn the game down to half speed. Feel like you're ready for the big leagues? You can turn the speed right back up to two times or more. It's not very often that you find a party game that can be enjoyed even if you're playing solo, but Joggernauts is that game. Very cool in my opinion. Bridge Constructor Medieval. Head Up Games used to be a friend of this channel. But Head Up Games gave old Dayton the boot after my Skill Tree Saga video. I could have gone much harder on it. If they didn't like me then, <laughs> they'd absolutely hate me now. Head Up seems to publish games that vary pretty widely in quality, but I think we got lucky this time around because the Bridge Constructor series is one of their best IPs, bar none. If you like constructing bridges, I mean. The games themselves just seem to get better and better. The first one is a basic bridge constructor. Medieval throws a bit of combat into things, with the ability to build covered bridges and protect yourselves from catapults and the like. Their most recent entry, Bridge Constructor Portal, is often considered by most to be the crown jewel. I'll play devil's advocate here and say that's probably because Portal gives basically any gamer a boner. Bridge Constructor Medieval is my preference among the trilogy, but that might just be because I have an even bigger boner for knights and archers. Metaphorically, I mean. My penis is pretty average. Cave Blazers! <laughs> ah, my old friend. A relatively simple roguelike with a plethora of enemies and bosses and upgrades. And each time you die, you'll unlock another piece of clothing or ideally another perk that will allow you to tweak the gameplay style just how you like it. 
the three main archetypes are covered, melee guru, ranged assassin, or magic master. But you really can't rely too much on just one when you're surrounded by disgusting greenskins. There are so many items to collect and mysterious potions to drink, some weapons can even be upgraded at altars. Oh, and the boons! They aren't permanent like perks, but they keep the customization train rolling. This game has been a favorite of mine since 2017. I paid full price for it on release, and I regret nothing. If you're into procedurally generated dungeon delving, that kind of feels like Risk of Rain bent Spelunky over and went, uh, Spelunky in its guts. <laughs> Despite the disgusting description, Cave Blazers is one of the most beautiful little babies to fall out of steam in a very long time. Dive Kick. My wife likes action games. She can even get into a fighting game from time to time, but she absolutely hated Dive Kick. <laughs> I suppose I can't blame her too much. It's more about mind games than anything else. Dive Kick is a fighting game with just two buttons. One button causes you to dive into the air, i.e. jump. The other button will launch a downward kick at your opponent. If you press the kick button while you're on the ground, you'll hop backwards, which can be useful for avoiding attacks. And that's it. I've just explained the entire game. No stun-locking, wave-dashing, combo-chaining, tier-less, made bullshit. Just 13 characters who are only slightly different, diving and kicking at each other, and somehow it still turns out to be a fun fighting game because with all complexity taken away, all you are left with is the aforementioned mind games. Fate your opponent into jumping and land a kick right into their solar plexus. BAM! Best of five wins. I'm shocked at how fun a game can be with literally the bare minimum of controls. Spirits of Xanadu. This game feels like it has great atmosphere when you first open it up. I was excited for what I might find in Spirits of Xanadu. Unfortunately, that atmosphere is really only skin deep. The story is told through audio logs and notes left behind from three characters, and while it isn't a complete bastardization of a narrative, it definitely isn't interesting or significant enough to leave a lasting impact on me. Three different endings? Wow, cool, and I give a fuck about exactly zero of them. Mabel in the Wood had the same problems. The gunplay is passable, but with unlimited bullets there's really no tension. Not that an ammo canner would really matter because the enemy AI is busted as shit. Walk through the same rooms and corridors until you stumble into a pack of robots who weren't programmed to path properly. They get stuck on walls, you shoot them. Easy day. What started as a game that I had high hopes for never evolved into anything interesting. It was made by two people, which might explain some of the constraints, but it's certainly not a game that I'd choose to play again, even with two other endings awaiting me. World of Zoo! The one and only game by developer Bluefang. Well, that's just fucking lovely, isn't it? How do you sleep at night knowing that this is the one major impact that you've left on the world? This is what you've done with your time on this planet full of infinite possibilities, is it? One day you're gonna die and get to heaven, and while you're standing at the pearly gates, St. Peter's gonna walk over to you and pull you out of line, and they'll say, you look familiar. Do I know you? And you'll say no, and he'll say, oh yeah, you're one of those guys who made World a Zoo. Congratulations on a life well spent. <laughs> no, honestly, it isn't that awful. It's just a game that was mostly meant for little kids. If you're a hardcore gamer, then you're gonna hate this one as much as I do. But with a two-year-old in your lap and an eight-year-old looking over your shoulder, the experience kind of comes together in an unexpected way. I would not by any means suggest it to my subscriber base, unless you've got kids that you're trying to keep occupied for a little while. Black Hole. Ah. I've sung the praises of Black Hole more than once, and I will happily sing them again. What a good way to wrap up a bundle that was really a mixed bag. This gravity-based precision puzzle platformer has what it takes to make you grind your teeth down through your chin. By the time you reach the halfway point, those grinding teeth will have managed to start sawing into your heart! This is not a game for the easily deterred. You will fail endless times. Even if you have the correct solution in your head, the execution is just as difficult as the puzzle itself. The likable characters, music, and pleasing art style managed to keep me invested for a good long while, but I'll admit to you now that the game remains uncompleted. There are only so many times a man can get tilted before exhaustion takes its toll. 
If you want a slow paced game that can still put you through your paces harder than even the most difficult settings of those AVGN games, with no easier setting available, then give Black Hole a shot. It is super good. If you like getting your ass kicked. <laughs> so, what do I think of this bundle? Really a mixed bag, but with 24 games in it, it's not that hard to pick out 10 games that are decent. At least 5. We've definitely got uh, Black Hole, Cave Blazers, Dive Kick, Bridge Constructor, Joggernauts is pretty nice, uh, Pathologic if you're into that, Simple Planes, Castaway Paradise, maybe, Double Cross definitely, uh, Maple in the Wood is pretty middling, Light Keeps Us Safe, I really like that, of course the AVGN games are really nice, Use Your Words, maybe, maybe. If you lack party games to play, if you even have parties where people will party with you on your PC. <laughs> Detention is pretty worthy as well, if you're looking for that sort of cinematic experience of a game. So how many was that? Like, 15 or so? That's most of the bundle, you know, so I'd say overall it's, it's a pretty good bundle. If I didn't have any games at all, you could talk me into buying this bundle one and a half times. <laughs> 15 games is a lot! And to pick those 15 games up for only, what, $8? Jesus, that is a fantastic deal. You talked me into it! You son of a bitch, I'm in. <laughs> but yeah, there there are a couple turds floating in here. You're going to want to definitely avoid Rise of Insanity. Lucius is not great. Days of War is not necessarily great. I mean, Days of War is built okay, but it's just another World War II FPS game. It doesn't do anything special, so... How can I recommend that, you know what I mean? Trident's Wake is pretty middling. Motor Racer 4, I'm not really into it. Spirits of Xanadu, World of Zoo, all kind of meh. But yeah, overall, I think I think the bundle's got some, some major potential. I will offer it some big, big points. So let me know what you guys decide to do with this bundle. Are you picking up the, the 10 or the 5 or, or nothing at all? Because <laughs> you already have everything, which is kind of the case for me. I was missing very little in this bundle, which uh, I guess is pretty cool. But friends, if you did enjoy this episode, I hope that you will like, comment, and or subscribe. Do comment. Let me know. I, I really want to know if you if you got something from this bundle, and if you did, what is it? Please, you'll, you'll make my day if you tell me. Do I seem needy? It's a little bit needy. <laughs> <laughs> I also hope you'll check out the links in the description to Twitter, Discord, and Patreon. We've got a new patron, Robert Allen Waits. What, what? So welcome to the family, Robert. And we've also got Mr. Weasel, Dot Nathan, Crimson Albedo, Lady Nix, Radimus Cisco, Damon Darkstar, and the OG, the oldest of them all, Nico the Legend. So I hope that you've enjoyed this video, friends. I will be back again quite soon. I'm thinking about starting up a new series, Battling the Backlog. Which uh, is quite an undertaking, considering that I have almost 3,000 games in my Steam library. But the earlier I start, the more chance I might have to actually finish it, even though it will probably take me 20 years to do so. But that's cool, I don't plan on dying just yet, you know? <laughs> so if you're a patron, there's a poll up for uh, how to go about that. But to everybody else, thank you so much for listening. I've been Brandon Dayton, your humble narrator, and another bundle banter wrapped. So I will see you in the next one. Thank you, as always, and until the next time, friends, bye-bye.